Clue cells, greenish vaginal discharge and gardenella vaginosis, I think, cheapest, easiest, achievable question. We should not do wrong. Uh, this requires some creativity. In placenta, first we need to know how many layers are there. We have got superficial, compact, intermediate, spongy, thin basal layer. Out of these three, it is that intermediate spongy layer of the endometrium through which the separation of the placenta basically occur and the basal layer will undergo the regeneration in the purpural period. Now one question on pregnancy detection, early pregnancy detection is a favorite topic. So you know very well that softening of isthmus is Hagar, bleeding of vagina is Jacomir, Pulsation in the lateral phonesis is oziander, which is typically found in the key. eight weeks uh, is the answer. So that's the reason oziander sign becomes the answer. Now, which coagulation factors are increased and decreased and normal in pregnancy? Physiological changes in pregnancy, doctor. What will happen to cardiac volume, respiratory rate? Uh, those four or five pages in Datta. Any entrance we go, we have a question. Factor 100% it will increase over the baseline. Whereas factor 2, factor 5 do not change. Whereas factor 13 and platelet count will decrease in fact. Factor 13, fibrin stabilizing factor will decrease by about 50%. That is what examiner is interested. All other factors basically will increase. So, though apparently the paper looks easy, it definitely has some tricky corners. Uh, be very sure, doctor. Now, what is the type of the pelvis? You all know that Calwell Molloy classification of pelvic types, in that what is android type? It is male type. And it has got projecting ischial spines and subpubic angle is very narrow. And that makes android the typical answer for this. Android type of pelvis is the typical answer for this question. So, what is the reference point where the fetal umbilical, I mean fetal abdominal circumference is calculated while you are doing the fetal ultrasound? It is that uh, umbilical vein perpendicular to the spine is considered to be the reference plane. And abdominal circumference is AP diameter plus transverse diameter into 1.57 is a way tomorrow as the MD Gynops student in when will be the joining in post graduation uh, Dr. April eh? May na? May? So some one month time is given for you to marry and come or uh, divorce and come either way. Suppose four or five years you had been preparing suddenly you got seat means uh, the wife will say all these days you are a dedicated slave from now three years I will be sacrificing you. So you should decide either of the two. But whatever, one more month uh, time to join. You will be working in uh, Nayapul hospital and uh, the KGH hospital busily working up the pregnant women. As a MD gynop student, be very sure doctor, the time is not very long. The medical management of unruptured tubal pregnancy doctor, how do you want to manage? When do you want to do surgery? When do you want to do medical management? Very standard question. So, one important fact is the size of the tubal pregnancy. The diameter of the tubal pregnancy should not exceed 3.5 centimeters for you to do medical management. If it is more than that, surgical management. Then similarly, the B, uh, beta HCG levels, if they are typically above 5000 international units per liter also, there is a failure of the medical management. So, they are all the important criteria. So, 2000 international units is less than 5000, you can do medical management, no intra-abdominal hemorrhage, hemodynamically stable, you can do. But the size of mass 6 is greater than 3.5, so you can't do medical management for that. What does anti-convulsant syndrome contain? Another quiz question. Only common sense will help. So, congenital cystic adenoid malformations are not known to happen, but all the other three. 
cardiac anomalies, spatial dysmorphism, craniofacial defects, they are all well known to happen. Then hyperthyroidism in pregnancy, how do you want to treat? You all know propyl thyroidacyl is the best option. Now few measurements of the fetal diameters, maternal pelvic diameter, you must be very sure when going to exam doctor. You all know that this is the occipital frontal diameter, very long one. You have two shorter ones, suboccipital brigmatic and you are having a suboccipital mental. So doctor, suboccipital brigmatic and suboccipital mental, uh, suboccipital mental is there, yeah, but it was not given, no, okay, okay. Suboccipital mental is very long, 13.5. Subhospital pragmatic and sub mento pragmatic are 9.5, hospital frontal is 11. And uh, subhospital frontal diameter is also there, which is shorter than hospital frontal. So, if the hospital frontal is 11, subhospital frontal is 10. So, that is the reason what is the summary? Sub mento pragmatic and uh, subhospital pragmatic, these two are 9.5, hospital frontal is Hospital frontal is 11 and suboccipital frontal is 10. So that is the reason hospital frontal is considered to be the largest among these diameters which had been given is what we can fundamentally conclude. Basically we use clean hoyer betkeys test in order to identify the fetal RBCs um, you know very well. How do you treat postnatal depression? What is the drug of choice? Basically doctor Antidepressants are the first line of treatment of postpartum depression. Among the antidepressants, which one? SSRIs that include fluoxetine, sertraline, peroxetine, citalopram. They are the ones which are considered to be the drug of choice for the treatment of the postnatal depression is what you have to remember. Now, this is a very, very easy question. If you understood what is the definition of Outlet forceps, low forceps, mid forceps and high forceps. Outlet forceps, what are the prerequisites? The fetal head should be at perineum. The scalp should be visible at the introitus without separating the labia. And the, and the sagittal suture should be in AP diameter and rotation should not exceed 45 degrees, then you basically apply what is called as outlet forceps. Suppose if the leading point is at the station plus 2 or more, you apply low forceps and uh, above station plus 2 you call mid forceps, that is the basic classification. At what level internal rotation of the fetus occur? You know the cardinal movements of uh, uh, defire, D-F-I-E-R, uh, at what level internal rotation of the fetus basically occur? First of all, why should internal rotation should occur? Because the moment the head reaches the pelvic floor, you have one pelvic inlet and you have one pelvic outlet. If you look at the pelvic inlet, it is the diameter of the pelvis which is widest, that is a transverse diameter. Whereas when you take the pelvic outlet, it is the AP diameter which is basically the widest. So this fetal head which is along the transverse diameter of the pelvic inlet should then go and fit into the AP diameter of the pelvic outlet for which internal rotation should occur. So now tell me where does internal rotation occur then? It occur the moment fetal head reaches the pelvic floor at the level of pelvic outlet. So shall we answer it as uh, um, as the head reaches pelvic floor or uh, uh, at the outlet? I will come back uh, on uh, a better clarity after talking with our Gainab's colleague. Huh? Anyway, a synclidism. You all know very well that the sagittal suture of the fetal head 
generally will be in the line with the transverse diameter of the inlet, equidistant from the maternal symphysis and the sacrum. If you deviate towards either symphysis pubis or towards the sacrum, you call it as asynclitism. So it is the sagittal suture which is deviated away from the transverse diameter defines the asynclitism is what need to be remembered. Where do you have diamniotic, dichorionic twins fundamentally? Twins are of two kinds, doctor. Dizygotic twins, two ovum, two, fertile, two sperms met each other and two fetuses are produced is dizygotic. Dizygotic are always dichorionic and diamniotic. Always. Then monozygotic means single ovum fertilized with single sperm, later on they both separated. If the separation occurs very early within the first two days after the fertilization, then uh, you will have two chorions and two amnions. Dichorionic, diamniotic it will be. Suppose if the splitting occurs between third day to eighth day after fertilization, then you will have two amnions but only one chorion. And if the separation occurs little later, then both uh, chorion and amnion will be only one. Monochorionic, monoamniotic. That is a basic funda. And twin twin transfusion syndrome is very common in the monochorionic, monoamniotic, monozygotic twins. You all know. So, doctor, within three days, if at all splitting occur, then there will be dichorionic and diamniotic is what you have to fundamentally appreciate. What are the conditions other than epithelial ovarian tumors where CA125 can elevate, doctor? It can elevate with endometriosis and pelvic inflammatory disease but not germ cell tumors of the ovary, which becomes the answer. How do you treat secondary, I mean, what are the causes of uh, secondary congestive dysmenorrhea? Any pelvic infection or endometriosis or for that matter fibroids, there is a big list of causes which can lead to development of secondary dysmenorrhea is what you have to fundamentally appreciate. What will laparoscopy through that keyhole you can see? You can see exterior surface of the uterus, not the interior surface. Separate uterus is a matter of something to do with the interior of the uterus, not exterior. Whereas, bicornuate uterus, rudimentary horn, unicornate uterus, they are all outside look. You can be able to diagnose using the laparoscopy. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding. How do you want to basically manage? There are many options available for us. We can use combined OCPs, progesterone only pills, NSAIDs, GnRH agonies, tenexamic acid and rarely danazol. Rarely danazole, maybe that will tempt you to un think about androgens, eh? because danazole has an androgenic effect and we use danazole, so androgens are also used. Examiner don't want to appreciate that long uh, uh, explanation. So, clearly the first three options are definitely used in the case of uh, the management of dysfunctional uterine bleeding. 